Well, New York is just the latest state to lift its indoor mask mandate as we see the Omicron wave slowly ease. This announcement today coming as Dr. Anthony Fauci says the U.S. could be headed out of the full-blown pandemic phase. Let's bring in Yahoo Finance's Anjali Kamlani for the latest in a conversation with the CDC director. Anjali. That's right, Akiko. We know that Dr. Fauci did make these comments in an interview yesterday, and it really speaks to what we're seeing, uh, especially in the Northeast. We've got uh, many governors lifting mask mandates, either fully or within schools in particular. And that is setting the tone for what we see as the reduction of Omicron cases. Uh, Dr. Rochelle Walensky did speak to this and specifically uh, because we know that there had been some concern building up about that new subvariant of Omicron and whether or not it could start to take over or whether or not it would just burn out really quickly. So here's what she had to say. We've seen so far, we with the Omicron variant in general, is that cases have come down dramatically. And so I'm cautiously optimistic that that can and will continue. Um, we are seeing an increased number of the, the BA2, what you're calling the stealth variant, up from about 1% to about 3.5% nationwide. We have seen in some areas of the world where that, that variant has emerged that it has slowed down the decline of cases. So we're watching for that carefully, but so far we haven't seen that happen. What about um, the vaccines now? I know that we are pretty set when it comes to the adults and other age groups, but that under five is still a question. Um, I know that there is set to be some action in the coming weeks, especially uh, to start off with, and we're anticipating that there might be a third dose needed and to just sort of start that off. Can you walk me through that logic and sort of why that's being deemed the best possible route right now? Right. So um, the process, maybe I'll just walk you through the process, and that is that the uh, Pfizer will submit, has submitted the data to the FDA or in the process of submitting the data to the FDA. Those data will be reviewed by their advisory meeting, um, but their advisory group. That group will render an opinion, and then the FDA will take action towards authorization or not. That'll then come to the CDC, and our advisory committee will review those data as well, and then I will take an action based on their advice as well. Um, I have not yet seen the data data from the Pfizer study. As you note, um, the data that will be presented are for two doses, and there is always an opportunity for a third dose as well. So just kind of following the suit of what we saw with the adults almost. When we talk about that, though, when we talk about, you know, the process, and I know, you know, you've been really under a large microscope um, <laughs> in the past several months, maybe in the past year, to be fair. Um, and there's there have been some hiccups along the way. I think on one hand, you've done, you know, a, an attempt at really giving the, the full information that's required to understand what's going on, but that's maybe gotten lost in translation for the general public. Um, what is it that you see as sort of key to recouping that and sort of helping move forward from now, considering the time lost and, and all the maybe misinformation and, and mistrust that's been building up? You know, what we've committed to is a scientific process that is very transparent. All of our meetings of our advisory committee with all of their scientists are open, they are public, they are watchable um, on the on the web. And um, because of that transparency in science, you have a lot of scientific opinions. Um, and then my job is to synthesize those opinions and under a, a judgment based on the, the opinions of, of incredible experts in the field of vaccination. And so that's what we will continue to do. Um, we're in a pandemic. Um, we are needing to make decisions at speeds that we have not had to make many decisions before. But ultimately, CDC and FDA together are responsible for the safety and efficacy of uh, these vaccines. And I'm really pleased to say um, that through all of this, we have extraordinary safe, extraordinarily effective vaccines. And that's really paramount in this. On that point on the safety, I know there have been some concerns over time about especially the mRNA vaccines, the myocarditis that's been present. Um, and I know that the discussions are just starting on sort of expanding that time between initial and booster. Uh, what do you have to say about that moving forward, sort of where your thoughts are and, and how that really impacts the future of vaccine uptake? 
Um, so we are, you know, looking those data, those data have been reviewed. What I'll go back to, though, is these these um, vaccines are extraordinarily safe. They're extraordinarily effective when they've been given as they've been given in the zero to three weeks, um, zero do dose at zero and three weeks for Pfizer and zero and four weeks for Moderna. Um, we will uh, look at those data, at, you know, continue to review those data and, and the discussion about whether that timeline um, should, should be um, extended and or whether it should be permissive to be extended is certainly under consideration right now. But maybe I'll go back to um, a really important premise, and that is while people have commented on the safety of these vaccines with regard to myocarditis, there was just a study last week demonstrating the real risk of myocarditis in the setting of COVID itself, a 15-fold increased risk of myocarditis associated with COVID. So I think we really need to understand the risk of disease um, as well as the risk of death, hospitalization, and many other manifestations of COVID itself. Speaking of timelines, I want to talk about masking. We're seeing some states sort of advocate for uh, removing mandates, obviously with the decrease in Omicron um, and the current surge. But uh, generally speaking, I think it, it's safe to say we've sort of shifted to understanding that this virus is airborne and that masks are in fact helpful. That's obviously why the, the administration decided to send masks to people um, uh, or rather to the pharmacies. But tell me about how you see these movements. Um, I know over time, it's always been a controversy whenever a state decides to lift mandates or, or impose them. What do you see as sort of the answer and how we should be thinking about masking? So first I'll say that um, we CDC provides guidance and that these policies are always been at the state and local level and we would encourage state and local level to continue in those policies. We don't make those policies. What I will say, though, is that we still have 290,000 cases every single day, um, that we have about 2,300 deaths uh, every day, um, that that death count is still higher than the peak of our Delta surge um, in the fall. And so while um, you know, we understand what, what uh, governors are saying. We also want to make sure that people are safe and that the CDC has not amended our guidance right now. We continue to recommend masking in schools for everyone. We continue to recommend masking in public indoor settings in areas of higher substantial transmission. And that right now is everywhere in the country. still uh, on these mask mandates, or rather just regular, just using the mask. And that may seem like it's contradictory to uh, Dr. Fauci's comments, but really they kind of go hand in hand as they're looking. Um, his outlook is a little bit more long term. Meanwhile, uh, Dr. Walensky is looking a little bit more short term with those masking comments. Back to you. Yeah, things moving very fast, especially with jurisdictions like the New York State uh, area actually lifting mask mandates. But Anjali Kemlani, thanks so much for bringing us that conversation. You can catch that full interview with the CDC director, by the way, on our website, yahoofinance.com.